Hey man, I'm about to show you how anyone can maximize the processing power on any computer while using Pro Tools. Let's jump into it. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and this video is going to literally break down some really simple steps and processes that you can use to maximize your processing efficiency on your Pro Tools system. It doesn't matter which Pro Tools system you use, don't matter how long you've been using Pro Tools, all that it matters is hey, or if you're running into processing issues maybe your cpu is slowing down maybe you got an older computer maybe your fan keep turning on it's heating up maybe you're moving from a laptop working on a large session well you're moving from your desktop with a larger session and you're going to move it over to your laptop it really doesn't matter there are plenty of cases and uses for all of these things even if you're not having processing issues these tips can help you to be more efficient in your pro Tools session let's go ahead and jump into it and see what i mean the first thing I want to show y'all is actually how to see how much processing power your computer is using. If you've never done this before, all you need to do is go to the window menu and go to system usage. Inside the system usage window, it will show you how many CPU cores are available for Pro Tools to use, right? And you can see how Pro Tools is using it. Currently on this session, and we're going to minimize this right now, I'm using a total of about, uh, it's going, it's changing depending on what's happening, but uh, about 80% of my computer's total CPU is being used just on this Pro Tools session alone. If I had even more um, tracks or plugins that I wanted to use, the system could really start getting bogged down. So check this out as you are working because it might be something crucial that you need to look into if you're running into CPU issues. And I'll show you another quick fix to your CPU issue by the end of this video. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to keep this system usage window open. And what I want to do is go ahead and say any tracks that I'm not currently working on, what we can do is freeze. So you prob you've probably noticed that there's a little snowflake icon on every single track. Once I get done processing a track, processing a track and I don't need to work on it anymore, I can just hit that little snowflake icon. It's going to take a minute to temporarily render these files. Rendering just simply means that Pro Tools is going to print down the effects, make a new audio file with all of these effects. I'm using literally 10 plugins on this vocal track, and that's taking up a lot of CPU. Some of these are very, very CPU intensive. So it can get really hectic when it's time to uh, add more tracks and add more plugins in the session. But by freezing this track, you'll notice, wow, Look at the big difference that freezing one track has already done. I've recovered about 20% of my CPU processing power with just that one track. Now you probably saying, yo Wavy, I might need to make some adjustments to this track. Well, it's all good. You can actually hit the unfreeze button at any time and continue to make your changes and then just refreeze the track again. But guess what? There's more. You don't have to freeze the entire track. You can actually choose to freeze up to a certain point. So for example, if I know that certain plugins I'm just not gonna change anymore, or maybe these plugins are what's really causing the, the bogging down of the CPU system, the computer system, I can simply go up to any of these plugins in any row and say, you know what? I've processed with my SSL and my MC404, that process with the tube tech, I'm not going to change those. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to hit freeze up into freeze up to this insert. So I just right clicked on that plugin, the one that I want to freeze up to, meaning everything before it will be frozen, including this one. So I'm going to say freeze up to this insert. And that way I can still manipulate every other insert on that track, but now you'll see that I'm able to free up some of my CPU processing power. This is something that I'll do typically, like if I'm working with Auto-Tune, for example, a lot of times I'll put Auto-Tune on every vocal in the session, and that'll probably be one of the first or second plugins that I apply. By committing or freezing up to that Auto-Tune uh, insert, which would be like the first or second one, that allows me to use all of the other processes um, all of the other inserts on the track without using up without that auto tune basically taking up the cpu power all right you feel me what i'm saying all right cool so 
that's one way. I could I could keep coming here and do it again if I needed to. Say, you know what? Freeze up into this insert as well, and Pro Tools will render. Now, you will see that once the track is frozen, once you've frozen any plugins, you'll see that you can't edit on that track. But this is also a really dope thing, too, because if you notice, right, look at the waveforms. The waveforms on my frozen track actually changed to represent the processes that were frozen on to it so what this allows me to do and i can even freeze and unfreeze temporarily maybe as i'm compressing so that i can see how my compressors and other processes are actually affecting the waveform <laughs> all right now let's go ahead and unfreeze all these tracks and instead of going and unfreezing them one by one which i could i'm just gonna hit this freeze button and that's gonna unfreeze the entire track bring me the ability to get all my processing back i think i hit it twice cool let's take a look at one more thing so that's freezing we could also choose to commit Commit is different than freezing. Freezing is just going to freeze that right in place, but committing will actually give you a new track in your session with the committed audio on it. So, for example, if I, and in the cases where I would use this is when, like, maybe I'm going to be sending this session out for somebody else to mix, but I don't want them to change the auto tune. I don't want them to change any of these processes. Maybe I don't change what I did with the SSL, don't change what I did with the tube tech and my auto tune. So, what I'll do is right click on that track and hit commit up to this insert. Once you hit commit up to that insert, you get a commit tracks to insert dialog box that pop up. You can choose whether you want to commit the track or if you just have a selection on that track, consolidate the clips if you want to. Or if you uncheck this, the new track will have individual clips as they already are. It'll keep them intact. I'm going to choose consolidate right now. If you have any automation, you can even choose to render down that automation if you need to. You can copy the sins, and this is going to be on the new track, this copy section. Copy the sins over or group assignments. Yeah, keep all that stuff. And basically, I'm just going to commit up to that point. And then my source track, we're going to say do nothing at this point, right? We just, matter of fact, let's just say make an active so we don't have two of them. And we're going to do it offline so it doesn't take all day. We're going to render that down and watch what happens now. Boom. All right. So now you can see that I have a new track, right, with the committed processes on it. So all those first processors have been committed. And I can add even, I can add new processors here. I can move all of these over and keep adding stuff to the line. So maybe that 10 plugins, the 10 inserts weren't enough. I could commit those first 10 and move on. But the benefit is, is that I still have the untouched track here that I can choose to hide if I want to and bring it back later as I need it. So that is commit. You can also just right click on the track nameplate and choose to commit the entire track as well or freeze the entire track too. Here's an extra bonus for y'all, man. This even works on, this even commit feature even works on um, subgroups and aux input tracks as well. So maybe I have an effects track that I want to commit or something like that. I can go to this mix track, for example, and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and commit my mix track. So we're going to consolidate the clips. I hit commit, and let's watch what this one does. I bet. So now that my entire mix bus was just committed, this is literally my whole mix right here on this track. So everything in my session that was routed to my mix bus is now printed down. That's like just one another way that I could print or bounce or bounce or export. Think about this. Think about what you could use this for. Maybe you need to export stems and you have a drums, a drum bus, you got a vocal bus, you got all your effects and everything like that all set up to mix buses. I mean, or uh, submasters. You could go and simply select all those submaster tracks. You could do this all at one time. I could select several submaster tracks, right click, hit commit. And then the work is done for me. No more waiting, soloing, and doing all this stuff. If you set up your sessions correctly, you'll be able to easily hit commit and export all those tracks. Man, 
That is super dope. So we just learned a few things. We learned how to freeze entire tracks. We learned how to freeze individual plugins on a track and unfreeze them. We also learned how to commit entire tracks and commit mix buses or any aux input tracks. It works all the same. You can even commit up to a certain plugin as well, man. What's your favorite way to use the commit or freeze feature? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. If you want to learn more about Pro Tools, click the link in the description. Sign up for my official Pro Tools certification courses. I'll catch up with y'all later, man. Be dope.